All right. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Wholesaling Analysis. My name is Elton. I am your host for the series. Uh, this is episode 32, 33, something like that. Uh, all previous, all record, uh, all uh, live events do get recorded. So if you want to have access to all the previous recordings, just head over to eltonvargas.com slash education, and then you could have access to all the previous recordings uh, from there. Uh, but welcome, welcome to another episode. Today is Friday, so happy Friday to a lot of you. Uh, probably some of you are getting off from work, um, but we're going to be heading into some real estate uh, wholesale analysis. Um, I've been wholesaling for the last 11 months in some out-of-state uh, market areas, and uh, also I do some happen to do some edu uh, educational side as well, too, so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need help getting started in your real estate uh, wholesaling analysis. Uh, or just real estate wholesaling uh, business overall as well, too. So I do go through like a roadmap. You can do uh, head over to eltonvargas.com. And then I, uh, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions there. So you can book a one-on-one -on -one session or we can customize a long-term one where we work on the progress from there. So if you're interested in doing that, you can head over to that uh, website as well too, like I was mentioning. Uh, but with this series, a part of this series is because when it comes to real estate wholesaling, uh, a lot of you and even myself, I'm at fault of this as we go through a phase when we're are still learning a lot of things into like real estate where we go through this phase where we happen to get stuck and we overanalyze things and we're just trying to figure out like, am I doing this right? Am I not doing this right? So you kind of need like some type of guidance. And that's why I created this uh, series mainly by real estate wholesaling analysis, because I go over the steps and uh, what necessities are required when analyzing like a deal and what makes like a deal work if it's uh, overly priced, if it doesn't make sense to bring an offer, if you uh, focus more on building relationships, if you happen to be working with agents. So whatever the case may be, uh, again, we go through uh, a few of those uh, topics uh, from there and a few other things as well, too. Uh, a little bit background about me. I've been uh, wholesaling again for the last 11 months. Uh, but beyond that, what got uh, before I even started jumping into real estate is that I actually uh, have uh, over uh, not over a half a decade of, uh, of experience in sales. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I have a decade worth of experience of sales. And with that, when it comes to like applying real estate, it really becomes easy because it's some sort of sales. Um, it's all about seeing who's interested and just uh, working on the negotiation asking questions. And then again, main the main topic of it is build that relationship because you're putting yourself on being a solution to a problem of on the buyers, on the seller side. And then you're also connecting, um, uh, you're networking that seller to a another buyer. So you're doing, again, a multitude of relationships uh, that, through the entire process, which leads to the entire process of real estate wholesaling uh, is the following. It's basically all these steps is what make real estate wholesaling. And again, there's all these steps that lead from point A to point Z uh, until you basically get paid uh, to find in like a property that all these steps that you have to take to make the uh, business uh, uh, take action, uh, make make it happen. And uh, the biggest thing that's going to uh, help you achieve this is actually just taking action. Learning, it's really good. It keeps you safe. But at one point, you're basically just putting yourself in a little shell where you feel comfortable. And then now it's time for you to reach that next level of being uncomfortable and you just start getting out there and uh, getting, uh, again, taking some action. That's truly really going to get you uh, really out there and uh, get you like your, your deals as well, too. Once you do the first one, once you do even the first action overall, or just overcome that fear of like, what should I do this? Uh, what should I be doing next? Or am I doing this right? That means you're out of your comfort zone. Now, now you're getting into the, like the real game of real estate wholesaling. And the main part, again, that we're going to be focusing on um, these series or what this whole series is about. All previous live events is all about is going through the estimated repairs and again, a maximal allowable offers. So I'm going to put you in the perspective of a few people. First things first is the seller side. And of course, um, the buyer side is the very important because basically that's who you're uh, that's who you're targeting in doing like a contract assignment of a sale. Um so you have to understand a little bit of both so that we can uh, see see from their perspective. Uh, don't just think about your perspective. Okay, I need to get the property in the contract and then uh, I need to, uh, I want to get a 15 or $20,000 wholesale fee. That's it. No, there's more to that. If it was that easy, oh, 
it will this game will be a whole different uh, game whatsoever and the competition will be a lot higher but because that's not the case it takes some work and it takes some due diligence and it takes some analysis to get the deal done that's where uh, that's why this game is a little bit more challenging challenging than just getting a property under contract and uh, assigning that to somebody else so we're going to dive into that and the very first thing that we have to understand about analysis is uh basically First things first, we, we uh, want to understand about calculating is the ARV or after repair value. And what after repair value basically is, is what the property is worth once it gets fully updated, if it needs some type of repairs. Sometimes you're going to come across properties that no, don't need any type of repairs. And it's it can be easily flipped like that because, again, some uh, or it could be a buy and hold as well, too, where it can be a rental. So the sky's the limit. But after repair value or if the property needs any type of touches or uh, gets some type of upgrades, and then it brings a new value to like the property. And when that new bring val uh, that new uh, value comes into play, then what it does to the uh, the nearby homes is it creates a FOMO or fear of missing out from other homeowners that they might be interested on in selling the home as well too. So uh, recently sold homes or recently sold uh, areas are always going to be a hot area because again, it creates that curiosity for nearby homeowners to see how much is my property worth? Is it really is it a good time for us to move, or can we make a good dollar? Where it doesn't really matter if we if we if it's a good time for us to move, especially right now, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Um, these are going to be the hot months where competition is going to be very high. So if you're not getting out there already, to check some action. That you already you're going to be losing a little bit. But don't be scared. There's still opportunities out there. It just again, it really has to make sense. But ARV is the number one foundation we have to come across, uh, which will touch bases on how uh, how we're going to be able to find uh, this ARV in just a little bit. But one of the main sections I want to talk about with ARV is uh, ARV is the number one uh, a factor that a lot of investors are want to know in terms of like uh, the potential for an opportunity on any real estate deal and anything below that. The calculations are very differently across the board. So if you're connecting, if you're kind of doing a reverse wholesaling where you're connecting with buyers first, it is essentially good for you to know how active your buyer is, how how many, um, what it is that they're looking for on a deal, how many deals are they uh, are they interested on doing, uh, either on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, a yearly basis as well too, and also what kind of budget are they into, um, so that way that you're able to determine if this is going to be a, a very active buyer that you want to build a strong relationship with because they're willing to take anything out of your hands, uh, or is this going to be a buyer that is going to be like a hit or miss? But understand how they do the their calculations because all of them are going to do the things very differently i put a few examples over here or some of the ones that i come across i'll let you know off the bat investor one and investor two are very common occasionally you're going to have somebody who is going to do things very differently than anybody else and sometimes that person might be doing a little bit different than anybody else but they pay a little bit more as well too so again there's always someone who's always going to be interested in paying more just because they they know the, the game in and out and uh, a lot of investors when it comes to fixing and flipping or even just buying and holding they don't even care uh, um, they care mainly about the tax code and the tax they play mainly the tax game so on be uh be aware about that and so don't uh, underestimate yourself on how much you're able to get a, a wholesale deal out of because again always do know somebody's always willing to overpay um with that being said next part of the process of uh, if you guys are able to notice as well too a part of the um arv uh the next thing we have to look is uh which says it on the word after repair we have to understand repairs as well too and when it comes to looking at repairs uh, repairs are going to be uh the following in terms of price per square foot and with these price per square foot um, these are going to be average price per square foot nationwide. If you're in some areas that it's very expensive, Philadelphia or states like California, um, Texas, uh, Florida, uh, Washington, New York, just very expensive areas. 
uh, I'll recommend adding 10 to 15, I'm um, sorry, 15 to $20 more per square foot on these averages, just because how, that's how it is in those areas. Um, but when looking at uh, repairs, the very first one, it's live repairs. Type of live repairs we're looking into. These are going to be very, uh, very simple uh, uh, repairs where we have to like new color codes on like on the home. Maybe just like a little bit outdated in terms of like the color scheme, and also maybe have to change like the carpet, uh, the maybe have to change some of the utilities. Just do very minimal work, uh, some landscaping stuff as well too. That will make it a little bit different in terms of like the property. Uh, next, we're gonna head over to average repairs. Average repairs are going to be more on uh, project type of homes that we're going to be looking into. Uh, these these average repairs are going to uh, be mainly what a lot of uh, fix and flip investors are mainly looking to do in terms of like those projects where you start diving into uh, uh, projects like in the kitchen, uh, flooring, roofing, windows, doors, um, siding, uh, landscaping, uh, lights, plumbing, and so you're starting getting more into like again those type of projects. And here's an example of some of the uh what a property like a project might need into. Um the, the entrance looks really good in terms of like the flooring, but then the, then you have some tile here and there. Um and the color scheme is just like not really um not very uh good in terms of it. So it just needs that update where you kind of bring in over to 2024 standards in terms of those repairs. The next one is going to be the type of repairs is going to be uh, the gut chip repairs. And these gut chip repairs are basically a full nightmare. Well, what I mean by that is you're either demolishing the whole property and starting all over again, which is going to be way more expensive, even more expensive as well, too. But if you know if the investor uh, or even um, the builder as well, too, uh, knows what they're uh, uh, bu uh, uh, building development, um, developer knows what they're doing then they know what they're doing for sure and they uh, they're going to be doing an amazing job in terms of like uh, demolishing and rebuilding uh, but a lot of these gotcha repairs are definitely going to need heavy heavy uh, heavy um, uh, repairs where you're stripping down everything from the walls as well too and you're going to have major factors um, like uh, the foundation if there might be an issue like on the foundation and again something else that is going to be expensive is plumbing as well too uh, just always something major and unexpected is always going to be happening and again the expenses are going to be a lot more from there so those uh, repairs again stick to these average prices per square foot um, on the repairs uh, but again when you're analyzing into like those expensive areas just add 15 to 20 dollars uh, per square foot on those expensive areas now, earlier I was mentioning that part of the very first foundation we have to understand um, is repairs. The second uh, sorry, the first foundation is ARV. The next foundation was uh, repairs. Now the third foundation is looking for comps. So when you're looking for comps, this is what's gonna help you find that ARV or the after repair value. But when you're looking for comps or comparables, you're basically looking for apples to apples. And when you're comparing apples to apples, you want to make sure that you are sticking within, within certain parameters on these apples to apples. And what I mean by that is that when we're looking at, um, at the square footage, you want to look at properties that are similar on, on to the, your subject property. So if we're looking at 1,500 $1, uh, square foot home, you got to go plus uh, 300 and minus 300. So minus 300 is going to be 1200 all the way up to 1800. That's going to be your uh, parameter living space range. Uh, when you're looking at the lot uh, size as well too, uh, make sure that you're sticking within, um, these are going to be more on the acre side. So if a property happens to be a uh, quarter of an acre, half an acre, uh, one acre, five, 10, 20, 40 acres. Again, you want to start comparing the lot size. These are good. Um, when you start comparing lot size, you're going to have more um, desert homes, uh, like deserted homes, like here in California, Bakersfield's like one of, main, um, one of the main ones where there's a lot of acres and land available. Uh, Las Vegas is another area where there's some houses that have a lot of acreage, uh, acreage as well, too. They're just more out there. And you just can find a lot of them in the Midwest as well, too. Um, but again, acres, you want to compare when you start comparing acres into the homes. Uh, looking into some of these 
uh, properties as well too. You also want to look uh, within a half a mile to a one mile radius. You can go a little bit more extensive up to like two miles, uh, but what's going to um, cut it off during those um, uh, radius is going to be high, high traffic roads or double yellow line roads. And what double yellow line roads are, are basically uh, roads where there's major traffic in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Uh, there's buses, delivery trucks, construction trucks, uh, semi trucks, Trucks. Uh, so there's constant flow of traffic where it basically splits one neighborhood to another neighborhood that whenever the property gets appraised at the new value after getting its repairs, an appraiser is going to be looking at the neighborhood. They're not going to be looking anything beyond the, um, anything beyond the, uh, the neighborhood whatsoever, like across this major road, because again, it's going to be a high risk uh, area. So again, even no matter how similar the property is, they just won't pull a property across a major road uh, as a comp because that's just a part of their restrictions. Uh, next is looking at the years. Uh, you want to make sure, again, compare apples to apples. Uh, don't compare 1960s, 1950s, 40s, 80s, whatever the year of your, of your property is, uh, especially the older ones, to a brand new 2024, 2023 built uh, home because the materials, the, the legalities of it when it got built are just way different during those times than what it is now. So things are just very differently. So again, we'll compare apples to apples. So stick within a plus or minus 10 years on those properties. And of course, the best thing is looking for comps. You want to look for uh, three comps as well, too. And what, when are we looking at comps? You want to look both at the good side and, uh, and also the bad side. What's the good side is basically those homes that have been updated. And what's the bad side is look at the properties that are selling at their current condition or at their is condition and how much are those, uh, those are selling. So you want to look both. Um, uh, of both uh, of those two directions, but additionally, you want to look for three uh, three different time frames when looking at comps. Uh, don't just look at recently sold. Um, that's uh, looking at properties in the past. You also want to look at properties in the in the present. And what I mean by that is, you want to look at properties that are under contract right now, this exact second. Because if you find properties that are under contract right now, that's also telling you like, hey, there's some homes that are getting fixed up and they're selling really quickly. If you look at how long they've been like on Redfin, Zillow or whatever platform they're available, Realtor.com, Trulia, Loopnet, whatever it is, whatever platform you're looking into a lot of these properties, look how long it took it was on the market for once it got fixed up. And it, how much is it selling for right now? Because that's a home that it's uh, it was either unique in terms of like the, the work that it was done or it was just like in a good area, which location, location, location. It's like a great factor to look into like uh, a deal as well, too. So past, present and then future is basically properties that are listed on the market right now that haven't sold. So those are going to be uh, different uh, time frames to look uh, into like properties as well, too. Um, next, we're going to be looking, uh, we're going to go through a breakdown of what a seller is looking, what a wholesaler is looking, and what an investor is looking. So we're going to do an investor breakdown and basically an, a whole deal breakdown uh, of what makes it work just in the number side. We're not going to dive into like the comps yet. We're going to be using some live comps uh, and uh, being, so doing some live analysis in a couple of minutes. And we're going to be using some uh, free resources to do those live um um, some those live analysis, unless there's some properties that somebody has, then by all means, we use some of those uh, properties uh, to do some comping. But part of the process as well, too, I do have my own tools that I've created along the way um, to help me expedite my process of analyzing uh, these deals. And so I have my ARV calculator, which is like kind of like doing analyzing a fix and flip. Uh, we have the complete rental one. There's also like a CRM to uh, keep track of all these uh, properties. So we're going to dive into all those and let's go uh, check this thing out really quick. Let me pull this up. Awesome. Here we go. And if there's any questions along the way, um, uh, you can ask your questions um, uh, throughout the, uh, uh, you can drop your questions in the chat if you happen to have like any questions along the way. Um, if there's no questions, well, I do leave it open for some Q&A afterwards. So this is the CRM really quick. So I can show you guys where you can keep a track of like all your properties, if they're on market, not on market, um, whatever's happening over here. 
uh, also uh, comps, uh, keep a track of all your comps, all your people, all your opportunities. Also, if you're doing some um, analysis on your area, there's this analysis over here as well too. So all this is the CRM, but we're gonna be head over to the calculator. And again, this is my website where if you guys wanna do a one-on-one -on -one session, you can do a one-on-one -on -one session. But let me pull this ARV calculator really quick. And additionally too, where is the, let me see, where is the, let's go over the deal breakdown or the investor breakdown. Here we go. Awesome. All right, cool. So here is the investor breakdown. Uh, let me minimize this. And let me minimize that and minimize that. Awesome. So uh, let me hide that for right now. It's so, okay, cool. So let's look at this real quick for the investor side. So when we're looking for on uh, the investor strategy, we're going to be looking for a, a few key things when uh, analyzing like a deal. So we're going to, again, we, this is where we're going to be looking at the seller, at the buyer, and, and also as the wholesale deal. So let's break it down really quick and dive into it. So first things first is we well, gotta be looking for a seller that is, is gonna be interested on selling their home. And uh, with this seller, it, it's gonna be the following. So there, there's, uh, so first step number one is find a seller that is interested on selling their home. So seller is gonna be asking for, um, the seller is gonna be asking for a, their property and they're interested on selling their property for $764,000. So either you find the property when you were door knocking, a direct mailing, whatever it is, cold calling, whatever strategy you're using or marketing strategy you're using to get your properties out there. Um, uh, again, you find a property and find somebody who's interested on selling like the home and they might be interested on selling their home for $764,000. Off the bat, I always like to ask, well, why are you selling like your home? To find like the motivation. Two, how'd you come up with this price? Or did you do your due diligence yourself? Or did you help, have somebody help you out? Um, additionally, two is how quickly are they, are they looking to like close? Because if they're looking for convenience, then that's where it's going to be looking. Uh, they, it's gonna, they're going to be looking may, in, in mainly in your side. If they're looking for top dollar, then that's where they have to put the property in the market and let the market or let uh, basically all buyers that are interested on their property, let them know what the offers are going to be on, on their property whatsoever. And sometimes they're going to like it, sometimes they won't. So, But that's part of, that's what they wanted to get the top dollar. Two is... Um, so you find those three things next. If you happen to check out the property, of course, you want to find out what the property repair needs. Uh, this, what you can do is do like a, get like a virtual tour, have like the buyer give you like a breakdown, like what does the property need or when's the last time they, uh, they've done like any updates on the property as well too. So you want to start finding out like what the condition is of the property. Or if you set up an appointment and check out the property in itself and you start getting a, a sense of like the repairs or you start doing like the repairs with the calculator as well too, then that's going to help you identify. So right now, let's say this property needs roughly $80,000 worth of repairs. So cool. We have the asking price. Uh, we know how much the repairs need. Now we have to do some due diligence to determine like, is this going to be like a good deal? Does it make sense? Or where would our offer come into play for this? So then now we have to find the ARV. Uh, we have to understand where, uh, how much the property can sell for, like in the area. If you happen to know like your area very well, it's perfectly, it, that's a really good. If you don't know your area whatsoever or how much properties are selling in that area, then the, it, it's really good. It's going to be a little bit more challenging to, for you to give a number off the bat. Uh, but this is the way an investor will look into it. Uh, I kind of like pre pre advance or due diligence uh, uh, on the and the due diligence phase, uh, but you happen to know like the area, you know that the properties are in this area are selling between like eight fifty, and then you came into conclusion that your property can sell for eight seventy five. Then now this is this property can definitely sell for eight seventy five. So now we have our ARV. So we subtract the ARV minus the eighty thousand dollars, 
uh, we're actually going to be using the 70% strategy. So what the 70% strategy is, after we subtract the repairs from the ARV, we have this new ARV number, which is 795. And again, this is how one buyer does it. I'm not saying um, the strategy like this it gets calculated like this but from all buyers. All buyers do, the, do the, their uh, numbers very differently. So it is good for you to know how they do the numbers. So one of these buyers happens to do it like this. Um, where um, after they subtract the repairs, they have this new ARV number. That's uh, that new ARV number is they get to multiply it by seventy percent, which is going to lead uh, for them to find out how much they actually are willing to pay uh, for that specific property. And that what seventy percent basically breaks down to it breaks down to the following: it breaks down to twenty percent being profit and then 10% being part of their closing costs. As you guys can see, part of the profit is $159,000 and part of the closing costs. So whenever you tell a seller like, hey, we're willing to pay for your closing costs, um, these uh, the 10% of the 70% ARV of the 70% strategy uh, is basically gonna be part of the closing costs as well too. But we're gonna check, or we're gonna continue checking some of this, uh, this stuff out. So now that you know where your investor needs to be at in terms of like uh, their the highest offer, which if we look over here, it looks like their highest offer is five hundred and fifty six thousand five hundred dollars. Now you know where your uh, how much your your buyer is willing to pay for that specific deal. So then now you as the wholesaler, you have to negotiate with the with the seller directly and let them understand like, look, we might not be the best fit for you, uh, but there's a few things that we can do uh, into it. But our first offer will lie uh, a little uh, uh, a little lower. You, you can always give like a range as well too. You don't have to give a specific number, um, but our range can be between like 540 to like uh, 560 uh, for, for your property. Um, and again, you start negotiating from there, trying to uh, let them know uh, that you're coming in cash, that there's no uh, agents to be involved. There's no um, there's no agents commissions to be involved. There's no closing costs to be involved. And again, the offer that you're bringing to the table is basically what they're going to be walking away with. So then somehow, some way you continue negotiating. It probably took a week, two weeks for uh, for them to understand where you're coming from. And they actually are in need and very motivated uh, to sell their property. So they're in need of the cash. So you come into the conclusion that they're willing to accept your offer of $550,000 for your deal. Um, not every case is going to be like a miraculous case where you can get like that. Sometimes it's going to be, again, you're not, not going to be the best fit for them, but if they're really motivated or they need the money for whatever reason that they need it for, then they're really going to be more motivated. So it is essentially, uh, it is an essential necessity for you to find out what the motivation is uh, whatsoever. Um, but again, if you keep on touching on that pain point, then that's what is going to help you get like the deal uh, at a lower price and make him understand where you're coming from and how you're helping them out in their situation. So for this example, which again, is not a, a, true, a real example, it's just, a, um, uh, but it can definitely happen. That's, that's the thing is of Murphy's law, anything that can happen will, uh, but you get the property on the contract for $550,000. Now, what you're going to be doing is to some buyers is now you're because you already put in the work, you put in the work of um, pretty much on everything on getting the property off off market, getting the uh, reaching out to like the seller, negotiating with the seller, get the, getting the property on the contract as well, too. And you got it at a great price. Now, what you're going to be doing is a assignment of contract of sale. And you're now selling your assignment of contract for five hundred and seventy thousand dollars which is $20,000 more or a wholesale fee of $20,000 for this example purpose. Um, and when we're looking into this, this is where you start promoting it. Not all buyers are going to be interested. Again, some of them might be interested on even just overpaying overall. Um, but again, it's all about finding the buyer that is interested on, on this deal. And if it makes sense to them, they'll want to, uh, they'll definitely be interested in accepting your offer. So now looking into this, now we have to start getting to like the perspective of the buyer. So you got the property for 550, you're selling the contract for 570. 
uh, you told the seller that you're, you're going to be paying for the closing costs. So those are expenses that the buyer is going to be uh, considering as well, too. So the first expense is your whole your assignment of sale, um, again, which this, the buyer won't know how much you got the property in the contract until everything gets closed out. Uh, next, they're paying the closing costs and additionally the repairs. So all of these numbers together add up to how much the investor is totally investing in the beginning of this deal. And so far, the investor is investing $705,000 into this deal. So then now let's break it down. Does it make sense for an investor to uh, buy such deal? So now let's actually take a look into it. So if the investor's ARV or the investor can resell the property for $875,000, when they resell the property, they're going to be having an agent involved. So there's going to be that expense uh, that we have to subtract. There's going to be the closing costs on reselling the property once it gets fully fixed up as well too. Um, then now when we subtract all those expenses, the uh, investor's profit is $796,000. But again, going back to the um, the initial investment, when you, uh, we have to subtract that initial investment of the seven hundred and five thousand dollars, when you subtract the seven ninety six from the seven hundred five, then now the actual profit for the investor at the end of the day is going to be uh, originally it was going to be a hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars, but now it turns out to be actually ninety one thousand dollars. So instead of being a 20% profit, it turns out to be a 11.5% uh, 11 uh, uh, profit on this deal. And some buyers might be willing, they're, they're perfectly okay with, with this. Some of them might be a little bit greedy and they want more. Uh, but again, it really comes down to the buyer that is interested. I know for sure some buyers that are, are in are perfectly satisfied with even 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars less than this, and they're perfectly okay with that. Uh, but again, it really comes down to like the buyer. And if it makes sense to them, it, it, they'll definitely be appreciated with this. And the the crazy the craziest part as well, too, is when you're looking into like a deal, when they resell the property, sometimes they can resell it for they end up reselling it for more than the uh, what the ARV could have been. Uh, maybe because the buyer that wanted the brand new home, they're like, oh, we're willing to take this for like $890,000 or $885,000. So the sky is this limit on how much the property can actually sell for, because again, it depends on what good work the agent does as well too, in terms of like marketing it. And also how long uh, the property takes and the time that they're, uh, the property is getting resold. Those are all uh, uh, factors as well too that you're gonna be considering. But that's basically a full breakdown of both the seller, your wholesale fee, and does it actually make sense for the buyer at the end of the day? So then now let's go through some analysis and let's uh, look for some properties. Uh, let me do the spin the wheel. Oh, uh, with this spin the wheel, if there's no, uh, nobody has any uh, properties available that they can share, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to use, um, I actually done uh, make Macomb, Macon, Macon, uh, Georgia. So let me look for somewhere else. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let's do, let's do Springfield, Missouri. I haven't done Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Springfield. Springfield, Missouri. So Springfield, 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 Missouri. Here we go. Let me go through Zillow as well too. Springfield, Missouri. Bam, there it is. Awesome. All right. So let's uh, let me reset all my filters so that way I can I can show you guys my filters whenever we're looking into like some deals. So first things first. Uh, when I'm looking to deals, I'm looking for a house. Uh, I'm looking for, I'm not looking for anything coming soon. I'm looking for properties that are already out there. And I'm looking for properties that are at least a thousand square feet and above. Uh, same thing. I'm going to do that over here on Zillow. I'm not looking for anything coming soon. I'm not looking for any auctions and new construction uh, properties. And I am looking for properties that are at least 1,000 square feet and higher. Bam. Now, I don't know Springfield, Missouri. So first thing off the bat, it's a brand new market. I've never been in this market whatsoever. Um, when I'm looking into this, Zillow does it. And Zillow, it's really amazing in terms of providing you data. It's all come, it comes down to how you're using the data. So if I'm looking at Springfield, Missouri, 
and I'm looking at all these homes, what I like to do is I love to scroll down through Zillow past all these properties. Properties are really good, but what's going to help me expedite my process on analysis, analyzing some deals, it's right over here where it says nearby uh, Springfield cities. And you guys can see all these beautiful, crazy numbers right here next to all these homes are all, all uh, of all these cities. Not only uh, um, that, but also near uh, neighborhoods and also breaks down by zip code. So if you like specific zip codes, then you can go, go by zip codes as well too. And this is what I, I like about it because that's why I put part of my the CRM is keeping a track of all your properties. I mean, all your markets, especially if you want to do deals in multiple markets is this. This is what I like to do is Springfield Homes for Sale. This is basically Zillow is giving me the potential ARV of a home in that city. Again, if I want to go down to the zip code, I can even go down to the zip code as well too. But all of these prices basically right here on the right side of all of these uh, cities, it's the potential ARV. Don't get me wrong. It's not perfect because it is a mix of um, new uh recently updated homes and also other properties that are not uh all properties that are in like in their old condition as well too so it is a mix of it but it is very close to the arv or what the properties are actually going for in that area or that city as well too so the arv for this area for springfield i'm looking for properties that are two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars or less so when I'm looking, especially over here at the price, that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm looking for properties that are 220, I'm going to put $225,000 or less. I don't want to look for homes, anything more than that. Because that's, again, the, if the ARV is going for that, some areas are going to be a little bit more expensive and that's perfectly fine. But I'm looking for uh, properties that are, again, are, um, that are already out there selling for that price because that's what Zillow is telling me. Prices on this city are selling for this much. Um, so properties on Springfield, um, uh, two, uh, this is going to be my ARV, the $223,000. That's my ARV, and that's basically the price of properties I should be looking for. So I'm going to type in $225,000 as, as my ARV. And then now instead of looking at all these overpriced homes as well too, now I'm looking at properties that are below 225. Um, and that's where I'm going to be looking to get some deals in terms of like fixing and flipping. So I'm going to put that off the bat in my calculator um, that that could be the potential ARV for uh, a lot of deals. So again, it's a plus or minus game, but part of my process is I have to do some due diligence. So I have to go through and actually look for properties and let's see what we're able to find. Uh, whatsoever. Um, let's go through uh, Zillow really quick and let's just look through some pictures because again, I'm looking for a fix and flip deal. If there's a fix and flipper in this area that might be interested, uh, then by all means, um, it depends on like on the property's condition, but if there's any good opportunities, hey, might as well. So this doesn't look uh, too bad uh, whatsoever. Again, I'm looking for a fix and flip deal, something that needs an update on the kitchen. Here's a good example, and it's only been listed for like 10 days. The only thing is I am noticing that it's less than $50,000. Properties that are less than $50,000, I've come across that they either, they're burned, they have a hole in the ceiling. They're, it's kind of like a good job home where you have to demolish everything. Or um, additionally, too, it, it just has like a major issue on it. And it's been under contract in the past, possibly, that it gets relisted. I'm not saying that's what's happening over here just because of the price, but I got to keep an eye on it. And here, let's see what it is. Let's see. So the deadline for highest and best offers. So it looks like the agent is just looking for the highest and best offers. And it looks like the last day is on Tuesday. So it looks like ne next Tuesday. Uh, it's a multiple offer situation, home on a half an acre. So I have half an acre. So when I'm looking at acres, uh, uh, like I was mentioning, part of the analysis is when you're looking at acres uh, or part of the comp parameters, if, if you have acres in the property, you have to stick with acres. Um, so, and especially here in Springfield, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of properties that have acres, but I don't know about that. Um, private back deck, cozy, and it's only been listed for the first 10 days. So 
and the property looks like it does need some updates like i was mentioning that's the reason i clicked on it uh oh sorry for the pictures being very uh very small but this is a project home where it needs kitchen floor walls as well too uh windows bathroom so pretty much the entire fix and flip a routine uh and that's there's a hole for whatever reason there's always gonna be a hole like in the ceiling or in the roof <laughs> always has to happen man um but for some reason they're doing a the highest bidder uh wins it type of deal and usually with these are gonna be uh properties that uh, there's also like a detached garage as well too and usually with these type of properties when there's a highest bidder it really is not going to make any sense for us um again i have to go through like the entire analysis to fi figure out is it going to be like a deal for it as well too um but when it comes to like land especially acres of land that's where it starts getting a little bit more challenging as well too um but let's let's move on. Let's see if we can find something else that is not like auction based or anything that is relatable to uh getting the property um the highest bidder takes it type of deal. So let's continue looking for some properties over here. Okay, nothing there. Let's see here. Okay, nothing too bad there. Good condition. Same thing with that one. This one's been sitting for 21 days. Uh, not a lot of pictures, but let's see what's actually happening with this. Uh, is this some type of like auction? Uh, the list price is not indicated. The seller's final reserve amount. The property is part of an online bidding event. Okay, I, th I thought I selected no auctions, but let me go through... Um, let me go through Redfin because Redfin is going to be a little bit more accurate in terms of this, which I like to do is I like to look for properties a little bit, some of them sitting are, are as well too. And let's look for the property that has been sitting on the most. So, so we have 100, 147 days. That's one of them. Okay, this one, not so much. Okay, let's check out this one. It looks like that's a church. I don't want to look for a church. I want a single family home. Okay, nothing too bad. This 85,000 looks like a good project home. Here we go. Here's a good project home. Where is it at? Is it really close to like downtown? And then where are we looking into? Yeah, so it looks like we have, okay, cool. So not too bad on the flooring. So detached garage. Uh, the roof looks pretty good. The ceiling, we probably need to do some adjustments on the ceiling, painting, uh, doors, windows, kitchen. Looks like there's bathroom as well, too. Looks like the floors is the biggest thing that it's like really good condition. Uh, and everything, of course, we have to probably do some to take that garage door down or a uh, repaint or something, try to see what the condition of it is. But this doesn't look too bad. So let's check this out. Um, so the Property is selling for $85,000. First things I would ask is why is it, uh, who came up with the $85,000? Is it because this property is listed with an agent? Is it the agent or is it this? Uh, and it's been sitting for 109 days. Off the bat, sitting for this long, I need to check out if it's been under, under contract. And so far it has not. They only done one price adjustment and that was in December. We're already on March, three months later. March 15th, so literally three months ago, they haven't done a price change, so they should be doing another price change. So my offer coming in low, it's perfectly fine for this deal. Now looking into this one, uh, the square footage is 1106. Uh, Missouri homes do have basements as well too. So let's check out, does it have a basement or is it a crawl space? Uh, has basement unfinished, it's a partial. Uh, so partial will probably be a little bit less. I'm going to take a guess. Uh, so 1106, so I'm going to go with like 400 square feet in the basement. All right, cool. So the property is selling for $85,000. Off the bat, uh, we have uh, this option of the investing rule. And what the investing rule basically does, it gives you this potential offer right over here at the bottom section. And with this potential offer, is literally about if it's, you're trying to do a fix and flip deal, you basically your offer will be the most 
is $59,500. If you're trying to wholesale this, then you're going to go down to $55,250. Uh, or if you try to buy and hold this, then you're going to pay a little bit more than most. So let's go with this fix and flip deal. Again, if I'm trying to wholesale, I know my wholesale is going to be $55,000. But then now, uh, looking into uh, um, so 50, let's go in the fix and flip. The property does definitely need some work. Uh, again, we mentioned kitchen, uh, kitchen, bathrooms, uh, walls, ceiling. Uh, the roof doesn't look bad, garage as well, too. Um, so let's go through. Um, I'm gonna go through the average price per square foot. So it's gonna be between 25 to like 40 dollars per square foot on the repairs, and it does have like a partial basement. So I'm gonna go with like $15. Um, actually, let's go with like, yeah, 17 is fine. 17, so like $6,800 on that partial basement. So basically we're gonna be doing around 45. Maybe we can push it to like $50,000 uh, $50, worth of repairs as well too uh, for this property. Um, and I'm looking to make 20% on this deal. So I need to resell my property based on the current asking price. I need to resell my property for $170,000, $175,000. Earlier, I was mentioning that we have a potential ARV, which is two twenty five. dollars So let's see if uh, the area is going to give us to like two twenty five dollars or closer to like this, um, uh, closer to like that, what the sell the property is asking for. If I'm not able to find anything close to like one seventy five. dollars then again, based on my offer, then the most I'm going to be able to sell this property for is $139,000. But again, we know for sure in Springfield, the properties can sell for two twenty five, dollars So I should be able to easily find some comps in this area selling for uh, 175 dollars And my square footage on my property is 1,000 square feet or 1106. So I'm going to go plus or minus uh, on that. So let me check out this one. Uh, oh, this one's 1502, but it does have a, uh, almost uh, a quarter of an acre. My property doesn't have a quarter of an acre just yet. Uh, but let's look for some, uh, some of these properties, see what we're able to find. All right. So let's go through first. I'm going to go through the pendings, but let me adjust the, the plus or minus game. So it was 1106 minus, so I can't do 800. So I'm going to go with 750. And then the most um, uh, is going to be up to like 1300 And let me look for properties that are under contract right now. Oh, we have a 210. Whoa, we have a 210 property. Look at this, 210. It's in way better condition than, than our subject property. Flooring, walls. Looks like somebody has it lived over here, but um, looks like it got updated a little while ago. But this is the kind of work that we have to do. Uh, the molding on the on the doors, uh, new doors, walls, uh, paint, uh, kitchen cabinets, uh, granite countertops, um, bathrooms with a great vanity as well too. Shower, uh, shower tub, uh, tiles on the on on the uh on the bathroom, lighting as well too. So this is a great great example, and that's under contract right this second. So that's a comp off the bat right there. Um, what else do we have? Uh, this is 800. Uh, is this one updated? Uh, this one's semi updated. Yeah, it's in really good shape as well, 205. What do we have across the street? 832 selling for 115. So, but again, that's crossing the street of uh, Vernon. I don't know if Vernon is like a busy road. So let me check this out. Let me go through Street Viewer and let me see. Okay, doesn't look too bad. I'm looking for like a lot of cars and all that. And doesn't look like it's a double yellow line road. So it looks like it's one of these main roads. So I can definitely pull some comps over here as well too. Um, there's this 153. Whoa, we have another one right here, 153. So, and this is for sale. So again, I'm looking at the, at the present right now too. And this is also for sale. This is a $140,000 one. Uh, but that's for sale as well too. Okay. So there's one for sale. There's one under contract. So now let's look, hopefully we're able to find something that has sold in the last six months. 
Oh, and we're going to get hit with this dash number, which is going to be a little bit challenging because Missouri is a non-disclosure state. And what that means is they don't uh, showcase how much the property did sell for. Um, so I'm going to be using a few resources. Uh, my first one is going to be prop wire. Hopefully, if anything, I'm able to get out of it. Um, man, so what I'm going to be looking for is... I'm going to be looking, oh, let me, let me sort this by most recently sold. So we have this one in March 1120. Let's look at the condition. It's a three bedroom, one bath. Uh, let's like, uh, let's check out how much it was selling for. That's a cool thing. It will tell us how much it was selling for, but it won't tell us how much it was listed for. So the property could have sold for a lot more than what it, it current, it was currently listed for. That's, that's the thing. So 165, let's check it out on uh, PropWires. PropWires is a free real estate data uh, platform. Let me see if this, over here it says pending. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, pending 165. So it doesn't tell me how much it was, it's barely sold, but it gives me the price per square foot. So 135 is the price per square foot on this one. Let me pull my comp that was under contract. So this one is on the contract for $190 per square foot. And then there is this one that is currently selling and this one's selling for 151. So I do have a huge significant range and bam, there's my ARV. And it's right on the spot of what the property is selling for $175,000. So man, this property is slowly spot on. So, but by the time it gets fully fixed up and everything, I can def I can definitely say it can go for more. Um, so I'm a I can honestly say it will go for one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So if I go to for eight one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and then this I'm trying to sell this to a fix and flip investor. Uh, it, one fix and flip investor is willing to pay like seventy four thousand dollars for this property. That means it it's ten thousand dollars less. So it's like a 12% difference. And I have another investor that's willing to overpay for this deal. And how much are they making on this deal? They're making like 26 to like $30,000 on this deal. And it is uh, spring from Missouri. So it's probably not going to be like a crazy deal deal. Um, but I mean, if they're able to sell it for a little bit more, because again, we do have this one, um, this comp that it... Uh, Man, that's just one of them. But, but let me let me continue looking because this the one that I use, it was this one. Um uh, does 150. And this one 135. Let's see if we can find something else that's so prior for a little bit more. Let's see, let's see. Uh this one, not a lot of not a lot of updates. Let's check out this one. This one's a little bit further down on Vernon Street. Uh, let's check it out. It sold on February 29th. I'm just looking for a property that, um, that sold for a good amount. So I maybe I'm able to push it as well too. Uh, to seven and West. Hold on. Where, where's our subject property at? Let me, let me go back to my subject property or that other property that I have found. Uh, West Olive. Here, let me. How can I find this? Twenty-seven fifty. Mount. What's it? What's it? Mount Vernon Street. Vernon Street. Ah, oh, come on. Okay. Uh, let's let's try to see where where this property is at. I know where I know where what burning is. I can I can see it. I can see it from here, man. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Let's see where is this property located. Uh, so Vernon and Vernon and Centric Senric Scenic Scenic. Okay, cool. So scenic. Vernon and Scenic. Okay, cool. So right over here, 
It's like somewhere, somewhere over here is where the property was in the past. And that's what I'm trying to look for really quick. So right in front of Little Caesars or next to, right next to Little Caesars. So Little Caesars was right here. See, is this it? Uh, twenty-seven fifty. Twenty-seven fifty. Oh, right here, twenty-seven fifty. Oh, it doesn't have like the history that it was listed. It looks like it was listed for sale price ninety nine thousand. Now, because over here it shows that it was listed for a hundred and. It was listed for how much? Oh, it was listed for ninety nine thousand. Oh, so it sold for a little bit less. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna stick with these numbers, honestly. But that's basically the analysis right there. Honestly, uh, the property can sell for one hundred seventy five thousand. It's just somebody again. Somebody's always gonna be willing to like overpay for this deal, but that's pretty much it right there. The, the we have a property, so if you're trying to get it on a contract, try to get on the contract for less than seventy four thousand dollars, especially for how long the property has been sitting. It's been sitting for a hundred and nine days, and no offers have been coming in. And this is a great project, and the floors are really good. And it hasn't been on their contract in the past. So this is probably going to be a motivated seller that is probably going to be doing a price adjustment sometime soon. And if there's other properties on the contract in the area, then it's going to be a deal no, for sure. Um, so I'm going to leave it open for some Q&A if you guys have some questions really quick. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's a deal for sure right there. And I found the comps as well too. So you can sell for $175,000, $180,000. And um, it needs roughly um, a few, uh, a good average of repairs, but nothing too crazy. But I'm going to leave it open for some Q&A, see if you guys have some questions by any chance, anything that pops up in your mind. If, if there's anything, if not, then this could be a wrap for today's analysis. No questions. Any questions? No? All right. Well, it looks like that's pretty much our wrap for today's analysis. If you guys have some questions, you can always hit me up at eltonbargas.com for some one-on-ones. If you need help with your real estate uh, wholesaling or real estate overall, in terms of uh, if you're getting started. Uh, if there's no questions, uh, thank you guys for joining for today's event. The next one will be on Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'll see you guys there on the next one.